what do you do when you're about to take a vacation? You plan for it, right? What about when you want to buy things you love or take a crucial step? The same process applies, I believe. There's no reason for the process to change when it comes to your hard-earned money or wealth and other assets, especially when it concerns how it should be used or distributed, especially when you're not here anymore. At ARM Trustees, we've built a reputation in assisting our clients in the area of wealth creation, growth, preservation, and transfer. With that knowledge, we've specially designed this series to guide you on how to improve the quality of your life by improving the quality of the plans on your assets and wealth. Buckle up as we equip you with all you need to build a solid financial and wealth transfer plan that sustains you, protects your loved ones, and safeguards your wealth. Welcome to the Succession Series podcast, brought to you by ARM Trustees. Hello there. It's good to have you on the show today. You are welcome to the very first episode of the Succession Series podcast, powered by ARM Trustees. This show aims to inform you on how to plan your assets and transfer same to the next generation in a seamless manner. On this show, we'll be having brief conversations around some important issues regarding estate planning and wealth transfer plans. We would also be looking at some of these issues with the aim of proffering expert advice and solutions. So I encourage you to get your pen and paper because it promises to be very enlightening. My name is Onana Sagbagi, but you could call me Ona. On the show today, I have with me an astute professional who knows her onions. Her name is Mofoluke Keshinro. She is the first certified trust and estate practitioner in Nigeria and the head of private trust at ARM Trustees. Welcome to the show, Mofoluke. Thank you, Honor, for having me. Good day, everyone. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. So I have a letter from a concerned person. I'd like to read it. Is that okay? Please do. All right. So it says, I have been married for 10 years and blessed with two kids, nine and 17 years old. Although my husband takes good care of us, as we always go on holiday to Europe every summer and all expenses are paid by him, he does not believe in planning for future expenses. I recently told him that we should have a plan that will cater to our children's future education using the Education Trust. He said we shouldn't plan for tomorrow, that tomorrow will cater for itself. I am confused. What can I do? Now, this is from Tolani from Abuja. So, Mofoluke, before you address this issue, I'd just like you to tell us about a little bit about the Education Trust. What exactly is an Education Trust? Thank you very much, Honor, and thank you, Tolani, for writing in. We appreciate the letter because he helps us to put perspective to, you know, ideas like this or situations like this. Of course. Which a lot of people actually are going through and don't know how to, you know, get professional advice. Mm. To simply define an education trust, it means a trust set up to settle or to ensure the education of the named beneficiaries under the trust is assured mm. whether or not the asset owner, the patriarch or matriarch of the family is no longer in the picture. You know, we try to put it mildly saying not in the picture, but really the truth is we are all going to eventually pass on. You know, they say there are two certain things in life, debt and taxes. So I haven't heard that actually. Uh, oh, debt it is attributed taxes. to it is wow. a, yes, it is attributed to Benjamin Franklin mm. that you know, if by chance you actually evade or avoid to pay taxes in your lifetime, you have to pay it as inheritance tax. Mm. But debt is a certainty, regardless of whoever or whatever. You are the number of years you spend on earth. That's true. So it is always important for us at every point in time to have that at the back of our mind, Mm -hmm. to plan for that eventuality and for those we indeed love. For the education of our children, it is very important. We want to give them the best in life. We want them to, you know, start on a pedestal that is comfortable 
because you want them to be you know world players you don't want them to start from you know where you started they have to you know be above you as the case is mm. so simply put an education trust arrangement is an arrangement where you put aside funds could be financial or real assets and the instruction to the trustee is to ensure the payment of education or education related expenses of the beneficiaries okay so how how soon can you know a parent begin to you know plan an education trust is it when the child is in high school is it when the child is in the womb you know when does that actually start and then how long does the person have to sort of build an education trust for a, a child thank you very much i would say i always recommend that immediately the child is given birth to because you have the name for the child then you can actually name the child as a beneficiary in the trust deed. The trust deed is a legal document that spells out the terms and conditions of the trust arrangement. So you put the name of the child from the point of delivery, then the fund starts to grow. And speaking to the question around, oh, it just stays, you can start taking from the fund when the child is goes to preschool, you know, nursery, um, primary school, secondary, um, tertiary education, and postgraduate education as well. And where there's a situation and there's balance in the fund and the, under the trust arrangement, it can be used to set up, you know, the beneficiaries financially in life to start up their own business or you know, get accommodation for themselves, maybe until they are gainfully employed or addressing other, you know, needs they might have at that point in time when they would have left school. Mm. So one more question, just a quick question. So education trust, can it be in multiple currencies or just, you know, Naira? What what exactly? Oh, indeed. It can be in whatever currency denomination that the settler prefers. It can be in Naira whatever currency usd yen pound sterling (laughs) yen depends on you know (laughs) you 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 want to adopt you know of currencies that are tradable Mm. all right so getting back to tolani's question so who do you think would be the best person to speak to her husband how can we approach him how can we convince a man that believes that you know what tomorrow will take care of itself how do we convince a person like that to actually invest in an education trust that's why we are professionals like us. Mm. We are ready to assist Tolani to speak with her husband, to guide in you know, making him see the benefits of having an education trust. Okay. And beyond an education trust, even the travel expenses, he doesn't have to bother himself about you know, having to take care of all that. The trust arrangement will cater to all the needs and she won't have to worry. It will be a robust plan that she would see the value. The husband will see the value, you know, in our recommendations and when we actually create the structure for him. Mm. So you are basically saying that he needs to get in touch with professionals. Yes, indeed. But it's actually getting that meeting. I'm sure she has tried. It's getting that meeting in itself. All she needs to do is just to, you know, give us his contact details. We'll reach out to him. We have literature that we share. We have, you know, there's a way professionals approach matters. You know, like I always say, I always say that we are estate planning doctors. That's the way we approach situations like this, that Mm. a Tolani as the spouse might not know how to because she's not skilled in this area of practice. Mm. All right. So I hope Tolani is listening so you can get in touch with our professionals and they would definitely speak to your husband and be able to convince him. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for your recommendations. But you know, on a personal note, I always like to, you know, advise couples that they should include financial planning in their discussions even before marriage. It's just so that they have an aligned view of, you know, what their financial outlook or plan would look like. What do you think? Honor, I agree with you absolutely. Mm. You know, before you get into that kind of arrangement, or contracts like they call it marriage is a contract Mm. it's always good to have you know a meeting of the minds 
around a lot of subjects financial planning being a major part of you major, know yeah. major part of you know the the, the discussions that sh- should happen before such um, a relationship mm. so it's really important to talk about financial planning how you will structure you know funding education of children funding lifestyle medical care mm. a lot of you know um, responsibilities within the family that definitely. should be discussed yeah definitely. and agreed on thank you Mofoluke for taking our time to be with us here today and that's where we call it a wrap on today's episode on the succession series podcast now don't forget that you can visit our website www.arm dot com dot ng forward slash trustees to know more about our education trust or if you would like to talk to a trust advisor on how to set up an education trust please send an email to arm trustees hyphen pt at arm dot com dot ng now i will leave you with this powerful quote by the great nelson mandela education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world See you later. Bye.